Today, we're taking a look at another fat tire electric bike. This time, it's the new Mesa Plus Step Through from Mach Wheel. And since I haven't found any reviews of this specific model, I thought I'd choose it when Mach Wheel reached out to me and gave me the choice. Now, this will not be a biased review, and Mach Wheel has no say so in the content of this video. So, with that said, let's talk about the pros and the cons of the new Mesa Plus Step Through. Because it's not the most interesting thing to talk about, you can find the full unboxing and assembly at the end of this video if you need help putting it together. The Mockwheel Mesa Plus Step Through is a 75 pound beast of an electric bike, comes in tan and gray, and retails at $1,699 and can sometimes be found for $1,599. It supports rider heights between 5'3 and 6'4 with a 400 pound capacity, which means it should suit most riders. Now, there's a lot of e bikes out there, but there's a few things about this one that really sets itself apart. One of the most impressive things, at least to me, is the LCD color display. In fact, it's the best display I've ever seen on any bike I've reviewed so far. On the home screen, you'll find information like your battery meter, speedometer, trip, ride time, and what pedal assist mode level you're in. It'll also tell you whether you're in eco or power, which is determined by your speed. If you hold the down and light button together on the LED controller, you'll bring up interface two, which shows you your average trip speed, max speed, trip distance, and total mileage. And finally, holding the up and down buttons together brings up the function setting menu where you can adjust brightness, change units between kilometers or miles per hour, change startup modes between free mode where you can ride without pedaling and safe mode which requires you to pedal to start. And you can reset your trip and do a factory reset. Now there's a number of error messages you could potentially get, just check the manual should that happen. Another feature I really like are the front and rear headlights. One, because the headlight is nice and bright versus other e-bikes I've tried that have less than stellar lighting. And two, the rear brake light is not only bright and has what I would describe as a superhero-like logo design, but actually has a brake light which activates when the brakes are pulled. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows as I found the front fender installation was unnecessarily troublesome and after finally getting it in place, find that the inside of the screw rubs against the tread and will most likely end up removing it before I take it out. The other downer is that instead of a simple bell to alert others on the trail, you get what I consider to be the weakest horn I've ever heard. Besides those pros and cons, with this bike you'll get a 750 watt rear hub motor, which when combined with the 48 volt 16 amp hour battery will get you an advertised 35 to 55 mile range, and though I've yet to test it, I assume somewhere around a max speed of 20 miles per hour. Charge time on the battery is listed at 5 hours, but it took me under 3. It comes equipped with a Shimano 7-speed derailleur and 7-speed shifter, which I personally like as it isn't too basic or too complicated, but more middle of the road. And of course, since this is a fat tire bike, you'll be sitting on a pair of 26-inch by 4-inch Chow Yang fat tires. We've got a suspension fork for smooth sailing, 180mm dual disc brake rotors, a heavy duty and pretty sizable rear rack, which should accommodate most add-ons, and it's all powered by a half twist throttle. Now that we've talked specs and features, let's get it on the road and I'll share my thoughts.
if you've made it this far, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and notification bell, as I've got plenty of e-bike and e-scooter reviews on the way. And now it's time for the unboxing and assembly. Here's a quick glimpse of everything inside the box once opened. As we can see, nothing appears to be damaged and everything is packaged nicely. Here are the contents of the box removed. Everything is still zip tied and bundled together. On the ground is a box which no doubt has your tools and accessories and a longer box which houses the battery. Here's another shot of the bike out of the box without all of the foam and zip ties that held it all together. We can see the 6061 aluminum alloy frame. Here we can see the pretty sizable space for the battery, which I'm assuming is going to be pretty heavy and you'll want to remove it when placing it on a bike rack. We then have your seat, which is pretty standard and should be nice and comfortable. And then on the back, bonus points for having an extra large rear rack, which should be able to handle anything you throw at it. Here are the contents of the box, which includes your user manual, both bike pedals labeled with a green left and red right sticker, and your charger. Then there's a small air pump, followed by a bunch of screws and tools to complete bike assembly. The first thing you'll want to do is loosen these screws here so that you can swing the stem to the front and then re-tighten to lock it in place. I recommend lining it up with the front fork to make sure it's centered. You'll then want to loosen these four screws here and remove this piece so that you can bring up and attach the handlebar and re-tighten it in a comfortable position. Don't fully tighten every screw just yet. You'll then turn the bike over so we can attach the front fender with one spot attaching to the center of the front fork where the headlight goes and two wire pieces attaching to the fork legs. Because of the way these wire parts are, I had a lot of trouble getting this in place and the instructions aren't super clear on how to do this, but this is how I did it, which as we saw earlier led to me removing the entire fender due to a screw scraping the tire. We can then remove this metal piece for protection and install the front tire. Make sure you line up the disc brake rotor with the brake assembly and then we'll use the included screws to tighten the wheel in place. Flip the bike back over and it should look something like this. We can use the lever under the seat to adjust the seat height, which can then be retightened by securing the lever back in place. Now that the seat is in place, this would be a good time to adjust the front stem attachment and the handlebar to a final position before fully tightening all the screws. You'll then attach your pedals, which again have a right and left sticker on each one to clarify placement, and finally put the battery in place, which can be removed at any time using the included keys, giving you the option to charge the battery separately or charge it while it's on the bike using this charging port. This now concludes the unboxing and assembly. Be sure to put air in your tires and enjoy using your new bike.